I'm Kristen King from the Investing Channel, and you're watching Pink Diamond, the show where we help you find the diamonds in the rough of the pink sheet and small cap market. This week, we're looking at a sector that has faced massive challenges and undergone enormous changes over the last 12 months, and a company that seems to have navigated these hurdles to emerge stronger than before. That business is West Coast winery Crimson Wine Group, and we last covered this stock on Wall Street Connected in Q1. Let's see how it's gotten on since then. Crimson Wine is an OTC-listed stock and has a market cap of just $184 million. It has operations in California, Oregon, and Washington State, and it owns and or manages eight separate vineyards and seven distinct brands. The company was established in 1991, and the business has grown through acquisitions and mergers with other wine producers over the last 20 years, and it now cultivates 759 acres of vineyards. Crimson produces a range of red, white, and rosé wines, which are positioned at the luxury end of the market, with bottles retailing at between $16 and $250 per bottle, though the majority of the company's sales are made by the case in the $16 to $30 per bottle price bracket. The business is headquartered in California's Napa Valley and sells its products through a variety of channels, including a network of nearly 50 distributors, as well as exporting to 30 countries through independent wine importers and brokers. 2020 was a challenging year for California's wineries. Not only did they have to contend with the pandemic and the closure of tasting rooms and an absence of tourists, but at the same time, they had to confront devastating wildfires, which at points burned out of control in the Napa. Crimson Wine was one of the lucky ones and its California properties escaped unscathed. However, even vineyards that weren't burned may have been tainted by the smoke from the fires of those that were. Crimson Wine has a substantial inventory of wines, however, from previous harvests that either are aging or awaiting bottling. That inventory totals approximately 700,000 cases of wine. The business was able to transition to a home or remote working model for staff, other than for those directly involved in tending the vines or maintaining and operating equipment. In its 10K submission to the SEC at the end of December 2020, Crimson Wine noted that it has not experienced nor does it anticipate significant impact or disruptions to its supply chain network. In 2020, Crimson Wine's sales totaled $64.1 million, just over $26 million in direct-to-consumer sales and $33.8 million through wholesale channels. California-based Silicon Valley Bank recently published its annual State of the Wine Industry report, in which it noted that direct-to-consumer sales would remain an increasingly important route to market for wineries even after restaurants and bars are operating normally again in the post-pandemic era, and that the back end of 2021 could see a sharp jump in sales of wine as consumers celebrate after a year or more of lockdown. It also highlighted that what it calls premiumization, or a move to higher priced wine, will continue across 2021 as wine drinkers treat themselves to more expensive and better quality wines. Wineries have adapted in the wake of the pandemic, moving away from a reliance on specialist wine clubs as a way to reach end consumers and turning instead to e-commerce and web-based sales. Wine.com noted that online sales for the industry in the U.S. had grown by 217% in the first half of 2020 alone. The potential upside for upscale wine producers like Crimson Wine hasn't passed Wall Street traders by either. Trackstar IQ, our proprietary search tracking database, has highlighted 251 requests for information about the business emanating from 135 individual institutional traders, taking Crimson Wine to 11th place on our list of the most searched for OTC tickers. Recent price performance is also likely to have caught the trader's eye, with the stock up by 31.6% in the last three months and 10.49% in the last week. And over the last three months, the stock price has made 11 consecutive 52-week highs. The last of these at $8.35, the all-time and five-year high for the stock having been $11.35. As we look forward to toasting our impending release from lockdown and COVID-induced restrictions, it's probably a good idea to keep at least one eye on the progress of Crimson Wine stock, which could provide us with another reason to celebrate. That's all we have time for today, but as usual, make sure you do your due diligence before making any investment decisions. To find out more about our Trackstar IQ data, sign up to our free newsletter at investingchannel.com trackstar.